Hey everybody, Mungo Dark Matter here, and today I thought I'd show you how to use an effect called Paw Stretch uh, to create ambient sounds and drones. Now, Paw Stretch is a program uh, that was written some years ago which stretches out a sound. So if you uh, record a sample that's a second long, you can stretch it out to 10 seconds, 100 seconds, and even longer. Uh, and uh, what this does is it, it well, it stretches out the sound, so it, it changes it. Uh, so it creates some interesting effects. So we're going to we're going to test that out. Now, Paul Stretch comes in kind of the original f um, software, which you can still get, or you can get a VST, which does Paul Stretch. Uh, but Audacity actually has a Paul Stretch effect built right into it. And uh, the Paul Stretch effect in Audacity doesn't have as many um, parameters and stuff that you can mess with as the original Paul Stretch or the VST, but it does the primary thing, which is it will stretch it out. So it's a good place to start, and actually I think it's probably the most useful is the uh, effect in Audacity because it's easier and quicker to mess around with. So we're going to just try a couple different sounds here, stretch them out to a couple of different lengths, and see what the effect is real quick. So first what we're going to do is I'm, I'm just going to say something into the mic and we're going to stretch that out and see the effect on it. Hello. All right, so I've got my uh, wave here of myself just saying hello and we're going to cut off the beginning of it. Cut off the end of it. And then I'm going to uh, highlight the whole thing. I'm going to go over to effects under audacity and I'm going to go down to uh, Paul stretch right now. I've been messing with it. So it's set to hundred by default. It starts at 10. So let's change it to 10 and start there. This is going to expand it 10 times. So let's see what that sounds like. Pretty amazing considering that's just me saying hello. Uh, I mean, it sounds like a choir uh, when it's stretched out like that. So that's the effect it's had on it. Uh, we're going to undo that effect and go back to the normal hello uh, sample there. And now we're going to go back to effect again. And once again, we're in Audacity. And these are the effects in Audacity. And uh, we're going to go down to Paul Stretch and let's make it 100. Click OK. And let's see how that sounds. So that's pretty interesting as well. Uh, the thing to bear in mind is you can add other effects to this. You can add the effects after you do the pulse stretch or before it. So for example, you could add an effect or if you add an effect before you do the pulse stretch, the effect and the sound will be stretched out. And uh, if you add the effect later, the effect will go on top of the stretched out version of the sound. Uh, it's similar to if you uh, have a guitar pedal board with effects on it, if you change the order of the effects, it will change the sound uh, depending on what effects you have and what order they're in. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind when you do that. Um, effects that are uh, like reverb, you you can try it before or after, really. Uh, but like if you want, you, you might want to add some reverb to the final sound, uh, uh, de depending because that that can kind of add some room ambience to it as well. Uh, so uh, let's try another sound here. I'm going to close this out. Next thing I'm going to try is I'm going to try these uh, little chimes here. And there are three of them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ring off all three of them here. And so let's just hit record.
we're going to stop that and uh, I'm, once again I'm going to cut off the beginning of this and I'm going to cut off the end of it you can cut this off wherever you want um, for this demonstration I'm just kind of picking a random spot so let's highlight the whole thing and uh, we're going to go to effect again we're going to go to Paul stretch let's put it back down to 10 to start with to see what it's like so it stretches it out 10 times So that's what it does at 10 times. Let's undo the stretch and go to 100 times. Back to effect and pull stretch and go to 100. It just takes it a few seconds to do it. It depends on how the longer you stretch it out, the longer it will take to uh, process it. So we'll try this again. All right, so that gives you an idea of uh, what that sounds like. Let's go to uh, one more sound. So we'll close this out, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to do play a couple notes uh, together on a harmonica here, and we'll see what that does. So let's start the recording. We'll stop that once again. We're going to cut off the excess at the beginning and the end. Then we're going to highlight the whole thing. We're going to effect Paul stretch back to 10. Let's see what that sounds like. Stop that. Let's unpaul stretch it. Let's uh, play this in play the sample there. That's it without any stretch on it. Now let's uh, stretch it one more time, but we're going to stretch it a hundred times. All right, so let's see what it, this sounds like. You get some interesting swells a lot of times when you stretch out, out um, the sound depending on how long the attack is on the particular sound, uh, the longer that swell will be. So there's a couple of examples of using Paul Stretch um, to create an ambient sound or drone uh, that you can use in recordings or for, for whatever purpose you want, actually. Uh, it's an interesting uh, effect to uh, mess around with. And uh, as I said, there's also a uh, Paul Stretch program, which is kind of old and the interface is kind of clunky on it. And then there's a VST version. The VST version looks like it's pretty good as well. Both the, the, the uh, full version and the VST have some other parameters that you can mess with. Uh, but like I said, this is the main parameter. The uh, VST, uh, to me seems like it might be a little bit more trouble to use because you'd have to load the VST into your DAW and then record the sound or, or apply it to the sound and then uh, probably just pull that out as a wave and then pull it back into the DAW. So it would kind of add some extra steps, I think. I don't think it would be as convenient. Uh, to me, some of the effects that you use in a DAW, you really want to apply it to a sample then you have to you have to kind of render the sample and then bring it back into another DAW, which 
kind of adds a step or whatever. So that's why I think using Audacity in the uh, Paul Stritch effect on Audacity makes the whole process easier. And it's easier to experiment with it as well uh, when you can do it this quickly and easily. I'm Mungo Dark Matter, and this has been Dark Matters. Whatever you do, enjoy the day, and I will see you soon. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.